हाँ एक्टिव जैसे एक्टिव हो जाएगा आपको ग्रुप में पता चल जाएगा आई कैन नॉट से एग्जैक्ट टाइम बट प्रॉब्ली बाई इलेवन ओ क्लॉक समथिंग लाइक दैट Is the screen visible, everyone? Is the screen visible to all of you? Yes, yes sir. sir. I hope the board is also visible. Right. So we'll quickly uh, do some questions of uh, current electricity, guys. There are around, I think, fifty questions. So we will just quickly complete those. Resistivity of pure water is how much they are asking, guys. So in general. direct again fact questions will not be asked usually in neat again right so some one question was there resistivity of pure water basically it is 2.5 into 10 power 5 ohm meter guys okay similarly next question if you see drift velocity of free electrons in a conductor is v not when current i is flowing in it if both radius and current are halved what is the drift velocity they are asking radius is halved current is halved it seems how do we write current as i think we all are aware the current density is given as n e v d right and current will be given as n e a v d yes or no so what will drift speed be beta it will be i divided by n e a so what are they asking drift velocity of free electrons in a conductor is v not when current i is flowing in it if both radius and current are halved so can i say this can be written as i divided by n e pi r square guys for cylindrical wire so how is drift speed varying it is directly proportional to i And inversely proportional to R square. So what we can write, beta? I can write V D one divided by V D two will be equal to I one divided by I two, as well as R two square divided. Sorry, I one divided by I two into R two square divided by R one square. Is that clear, all of you? Yes or no? Right. So what is given? I two value is halved. Radius is also halved, guys. So what we can write? Vd1 divided by Vd2. If I take, you will get it as I1. What is I2 here? Halved. What happened to radius R2? It is also halved, guys. So I can write it as R1 by 2 whole divided by R1 whole square. So what are we going to get here? I1 and I1 will get cancelled out. R1 and R1 will get cancelled out. So one whole divided by one by two will be two. So this will be two into one by four, which will get it as one by two, guys. So what will Vd2 value be? It will be two times of Vd1. It will be two v not. So direct question again, formula based question itself. So two v not should be the answer for this. Drift velocity in terms of current. How is it given as? In terms of current, it will be given as I divided by N E A. So it is directly proportional to current, inversely proportional to area, guys. Understood all of you? Yes or no? Next question. Let us see. Two wires of Same dimensions, but resistivity rho and two rho are connected in parallel. They are asking us to find what is the equivalent resistivity of the conductor, guys. They are asking equivalent resistivity of the conductor. Dimensions are same. It means length will be same, area will be same, guys. Right? So can I take the resistance of the first conductor if I take in this first resistor if I take? What would be the resistance again? Can I write it as? Because uh, resistivity is given as rho, dimensions are same. Can I write it as rho L by A? Yes or no, all of you? In the same manner, what we can write R two value as? Can I write it as two rho into L divided by A or not? Whenever they are connected in parallel, what will R effective value be? You all know it will be given as, or in general we can write in parallel combination. In parallel combination, what will be one by R effective value will be one by R one. Plus one by R two, yes or no? So from this, what we can write better? So can I write it as uh, R effective is rho effective, L effective, A effective? So I can write it as A effective divided by rho effective into L effective should be equal to A one divided by, or directly I can write A divided by rho into L plus A divided by So you muted, sir. Now is it fine? 
3 by 2 times of uh, uh, A by rho L you will get. Now, it is very important to understand what is effective area, guys. In parallel combination, generally, effective area will be A1 plus A2. And effective length, it can either be L1 or it can either be L2, guys. It can either be L1 or it can be L2. So effective area, how much will it be? Will it become 2A or not? Because both the areas are same now. So what we can write here, I can just write 2A divided by rho effective into, what is L effective? L only. Should be equal to 3 by 2A divided by rho L. So from this, we can cancel out L, L, A and A. What will I get rho effective value as? I am going to get rho effective as 4 rho divided by 3. Clear everyone? Parallel combination case. Dimensions are same, means length will be same, area will be same. We know in parallel combination, 1 by R effective will be equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. But you should be very careful in parallel combination. We will write the effective area as A1 plus A2, guys. And we'll take the effective length as either you can take L1 or you can take L2. Understood, everyone? <coughs> Is that clear? Yes, sir. Right. Next case, let us consider again the resistance of the following carbon resistor will be how much they are asking. So what is this? First color will represent first digit, as I said. Second color will represent second digit. Third color will represent multiplier. And fourth color will represent tolerance, guys. So what is the basic logic? I think I have already told you. BB Roy, where did he go, guys? Went to, we should not write anything, went to Great Britain with his gray wife to buy gold, silver, no color. Yes or no? So what is this? This is black, guys. The first one happens to be black. This turns out to be brown. This is red, orange, right? Then we have yellow. Then we have green, right? This will be blue, right? In the same manner, uh, we will write this as violet, guys. Then to buy with his gray wife, no? So you can take it as gray, and this will be white to buy gold silver and you will have no color guys this is the combination that you should use so what is the corresponding digit for black it is zero for brown it is one for red it is two for orange it is three so directly from here you can write what will the resistance be beta or i'll i'll write it on this side what will be the resistance first digit is red so it will be two then next uh, color is orange so it will be three the third digit represents multiplier guys into now, what is multiplier? Whatever digit you have, it is 10 raised to the digit, guys. 10 power 1, 10 power 2, 10 power 3, so on. For gold, it will be 10 power minus 1. For silver, it will be 10 power minus 2. For no color, you will not have any multiplier, guys. So what is the value here? Brown is given. So for brown, what is the multiplier? Into 10 power 1. This is our resistance, actually. Plus or minus, you are going to have some tolerance. for gold the tolerance will be five percent for silver it will be ten percent for no color it will be twenty percent so what i'll write plus or minus ten percent tolerance we are going to write so the following resistance will be 23 into 10 power 1 ohm plus or minus 10 percent is that clear yes or no bb roy went to great britain with his gray wife to buy gold silver no color understood charge is given guys charge is passing through a cross section at any instant it seems and uh, they're asking us to find current at two seconds will it be current at particular instant or not so by definition current is rate of flow of charge yes or no guys in the same manner instantaneous current as i already said is it also dq divided by dt or not so directly i'll write d by dt of charge is given as t square plus 2t guys is it in the form derivative of u plus v Yes, it is in the form derivative of u plus v. So I can write derivative of u plus derivative of v, guys. In the same manner, it is in the form x power n. So please remember derivative of x power n. Most of you will study it as n into x power n minus 1. But I will teach it as n into x power n minus 1 d by dx of x, guys. What is d by dx of x? 1 only. So why I usually write d by dx of x is in place of your x power n if some other function is given so directly i can write n into 
that function power n minus 1 d by dx of that function chain rule which we usually call it as guys so what is derivative of t square you will get it as 2t plus 2 is a constant value it is not alone guys if 2 is alone then derivative will be 0 but 2 is a constant value it has some some tail with it guys which is t again so in that case we can bring derivatives or the constant values outside the derivatives and i'll be left out with derivative of t with respect to t so what is the current i am going to get 2t plus derivative of t with respect to t is anyhow 1 only so this is the instantaneous current they are asking us to find current value at t is equal to 2 seconds guys so what are we going to get 2 into 2 plus 2 which will be equal to 6 ampere is that clear yes or no they are asking us what is the dimensional formula of mobility guys so basically what do we know regarding mobility it is given as the ratio of drift to speed to electric field so speed again dimensions you know implies dimensions of mobility if we are talking about speed dimensions you know it is lt power minus 1 yes or no guys yes or no in the same manner what will be electric field electric field can be written as force by charge guys because force can be written as charge into electric field i can write it as force by charge so i am going to get electric field as ml t power minus 3 a power minus 1 so what would be dimensions of mobility beta you are going to get the dimensions as m power minus 1 l naught t square a power 1 so wherever that is being formed you can just check it m power minus 1 l naught t square a power 1 fourth option will be the dimensions of mobility you can send harshit clear all of you it is given as the ratio of drift to speed to electric field it will be anyhow independent of the drift to, drift to speed as well as the electric field guys understood all of you in this we have seen dimensions of electric field also dimensions of electric field will be ml power 1 t power minus 3 a power minus 1 guys understood next current density is given at a certain area is also given what is the current they are asking so if you look at current density it is given as 2i cap plus 3j cap is it constant value guys yes there is no variable in this so it is a constant value so whenever we have constant values of current density what will i get current value as current value will be given as dot product of current density and area vector guys right and always remember whenever we are doing let us say if a bar is given as ax i cap plus a y j cap and b bar is given as this we study in vectors again bx i cap plus b y j cap guys then directly what we can write a bar dot b bar as a bar dot b bar i can write it as ax bx plus a y b y guys yes or no so here what we can write directly i can write this as or if you want to add one more step 2i cap plus 3j cap dot i cap plus 4j cap you are going to get which turns out to be 2 into 1 plus 3 into 4 which i'll get it as 14 ampere guys or my could because area is given in millimeter square so i'll get it as uh, j bar is any ampere per meter square millimeter square means into 10 power minus 6 you will get so into 10 power minus 6 ampere which turns out to be 14 micro ampere so please remember this point guys whenever you have two vectors and if you are performing dot product of those two vectors i'll directly get ax bx plus ay by if you are taking in space guys you will get it as ax bx plus ay by plus az bz clear all of you yes or no next what they are asking they are asking us to find out what is the maximum current produced by a cell of 20 volt and internal resistance 5 ohm guys right so you have a certain cell in this manner this is a cell of 20 volt and internal resistance 5 ohm suppose this is placed just like this guys 20 volt and 5 ohm if it is placed something like this is there any closed circuit is there any closed circuit here is there any closed circuit no so when will maximum current be produced by a cell guys if the terminals of the cell are short circuited guys 
right so when will maximum current be produced by the cell if the terminals of the cell are short circuited now is it a closed circuit yes it is a closed circuit always remember right from positive terminal there will be some current flowing out guys current will always come out of positive terminal and it will enter back into negative terminal always remember whatever current is coming out of the positive terminal the same current has to enter back into the negative terminal if the same current is not entering back into the negative terminal that particular cell will not be able to produce current guys now you see what is the resistance offered to the flow of the current by the circuit there is only one resistance here so here r effective value will be equal to small r, small r only which is 5 ohm and emf you know it is 20 volt guys so how i can write i, I value as I value will be written as E divided by R effective, which I'll get it as 20 divided by 5, which is 4 ampere, guys. Clear, everyone? So when will we obtain maximum current produced by the cell? If the terminals of the cell are short-circuited, guys. Then I can say maximum current will be produced by the cell. Understood, everyone? Yes or no? So but there is no current drawn due to the internal resistance, guys. No current drawn through the internal resistance. So we had there is no current. There is no current drawn due to the internal resistance of the cell. I didn't say no current drawn to the internal resistance. If if the cell is not drawing any current, I said potential difference will be EMF. If the cell is drawing any current, then potential difference will be called as terminal voltage. I didn't say anything related to internal resistance. Internal resistance will draw current or not. I have not used this term clear yes in the given diagram the reading of the ammeter is how much they are asking similar kind of question we did yesterday guys if you see one diagram we have seen now you see between this point and this point any element no between this point and this point any element no so whatever is the potential here same will be potential here same will be potential here between this point and this point any element no between this point and this point, any element? No. So whatever is potential here, same will be potential here, same will be potential here. So usually how do we take for cell is, guys? We will take it in this manner. This is higher potential, right? This is lower potential. So if I take the positive terminal as plus 10 volt, automatically the negative terminal will be 0 volt. Or if I take the positive terminal as 0 volt, guys, automatically, I think it is not appearing here. If I take this as plus 10 volt, automatically the negative terminal will be 0 volt. In the same manner, if I consider this to be 0 volt beta, then this terminal will become minus 10 volt again. This is how we represent the potentials across a cell, guys. Right? Higher potential, lower potential. So if, we, if the potential difference is 10 volt, then I can write the positive terminal to be a 10 volt. If positive terminal is a 10 volt, the negative terminal will be 0 volt. Or I can consider positive terminal to be at 0 volt, then negative terminal will be at minus 10 volt. So whatever is potential difference between these two points, will same be potential difference across these two points? Yes. Let us name those two points as PQ, guys. So what is potential difference across PQ? Potential difference across PQ will be 10 volt only. They're asking us what is the current that is going to flow, guys. So let us imagine there is some I current produced by the battery. So what will happen here current is entering into the junction so what will happen you can consider current is going to leave out guys right so i1 current is flowing through 6 ohm you know potential difference across 6 ohm right so if i want to find i1 value what i'll write potential difference across 6 ohm divided by uh, resistance of the 6 ohm directly you can write this so what is potential difference across pq guys it is 10 volt divided by 6. So what will the answer be? 5 by 3 ampere will be the answer. Understood everyone? Is this clear, all of you? We have seen this case yesterday. We have seen this case yesterday, guys. Right? Two resistors are connected like this. Are they connected between two same points? Yes. So they are going to be in parallel. So whatever is the potential difference between these two points, same will be the potential difference across these two points. 
same will be the potential difference across these two points understood yes or no yes sir let us talk about the current through 5 ohm resistance in the net network now i have two cells guys right if you look at this this is one cell right and if you look at this this is also another cell now how are these two cells connected first cell is connected between this point and this point so is the second cell or not guys yes so here we have two cells connected between two same points so how will these cells be they are going to be in parallel combination so in this case what is the effective emf beta yesterday we have seen a formula it is e1 by r1 plus e2 by r2 right whole divided by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 so you can assume this to be our first cell and you can assume this to be our second cell guys so what do we write e1 value as e1 value is 20 divided by 2 plus we can write 10 divided by 1 whole divided by 1 by 2 plus 1 by 1 so this is uh, 10 plus 10 you will get it as 20 1 by 2 plus 1 will be 3 by 2 guys which i'll get it as 40 by 3 volts and how do i write r1 and r2 will now be in parallel combination so i'll write 1 by r effective value will be 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 guys so from this implies what will i get i'll get 1 by r effective value as 1 by 2 plus 1 by 1 which turns out to be 3 by 2 from this we will get r effective value as 2 by 3 ohm guys so what i can do to this circuit is this particular circuit can now be redrawn guys so i can replace these two cells with the help of one cell now and the two resistors with the help of one internal resistor guys and they are connected to some external load resistance clear all of you so what is the effective emf now it is 40 by 3 volts and what is the effective internal resistance 2 by 3 ohm i want to find current through the 5 ohm resistor so again you see is the circuit closed yes the circuit is closed so when the circuit is closed there will be some current flowing through the circuit guys so you can apply kvl in this loop so what is the resistance offered by the entire circuit guys so if you look at r effective you will get it as 5 plus 2 by 3 which is 17 divided by 3 ampere sorry 17 divided by 3 ohm and emf you already know it is 40 divided by 3 volt right so what we can take whatever is whatever current is flowing through 5 ohm resistor same current will be flowing through 2 by 3 ohm guys so what i'll write i value as we'll write it as e divided by r effective which turns out to be 40 by 3 whole divided by 17 by 3 which is 40 divided by 17 ampere is that clear everyone did you understand whenever two cells are connected between two same points that combination will be a parallel combination and in parallel combination how will we find the effective value e1 by r1 plus e2 by r2 plus e3 by r3 plus so on divided by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 plus so on clear all of you so these two cells can be replaced with a one cell whose effective emf is 40 by 3 and effective internal resistance is 2 by 3 ohm understood Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right. Ammeter reads four ampere, and voltmeter reads forty volt. The value of resistance R is how much they are saying, guys? Right. Assuming finite value of resistance of ammeter and voltmeter. Now they are saying the ammeter A reads four ampere. So how much is this reading? this is reading how much beta 4 ampere so 4 ampere current will be flowing through the ammeter or not and voltmeter is reading how much volt voltmeter is reading 40 volt right it is not a ideal voltmeter is it an ideal voltmeter no it is not an ideal because if it is an ideal voltmeter how much would be the effect how much would have been the uh, resistance of that or reading whatever it is if i consider ideal voltmeter it is different guys so let us imagine it is not an ideal voltmeter case 
okay assuming finite value of resistance of ammeter and voltmeter means there are some values of resistance guys finite value they said so if it is a uh, ideal voltmeter what would be the resistance be for voltmeter ideal voltmeter infinite but he said that assume finite value of resistances means is it ideal voltmeter no so what will happen if this is 4 ampere beta now in this situation right will there be some current flowing or not so this current is now going to get divided let us say i ampere is flowing through r resistor here what will i get here you will get it as 4 minus i now what they are saying what is the uh, the value of resistance r is how much they are asking now please tell me potential difference across these two points a and b let us say what is potential difference across a and b did we get 40 volts see guys ideal voltmeter means answer directly will be 10 ohm but it is not ideal voltmeter so because it is not ideal voltmeter here current will get divided guys okay however the ends of the resistor are a and b voltmeter is again connected between a and b what is reading of the voltmeter 40 volts so potential difference between a and b will be 40 volts or i can say potential difference across the resistor will be 40 volts guys now what are we going to get here are we going to get it as i into r will be equal to 40 or not now what will r value be it will be 40 divided by i now is i exactly equal to 4 no what is i beta i value will be less than 4 so what will happen to the entire value if this is less than 4 will entire value be more than 10 ohm or not the answer should be more than 10 ohm clear all of you you got did you get did you understand it everyone hello did you all understand yes sir. see if it was an ideal voltmeter 4 ampere current would have passed through the resistor and i would have said the resistance here would be 10 ohm but because it is not ideal voltmeter the current 4 ampere will now get divided so current flowing through the resistor will be less than 4 ampere but potential difference across the resistor is 40 potential difference is 40 current is less than 4 so automatically resistance value will become more than 10 ohm is that clear everyone yes sir i hope it is clear let us move to the next question guys a wire of resistance x ohm is drawn out so that length is increased to three times its original length right so what is happening to new length l dash beta it became three times of the original length and new resistance becomes 36 ohm it seems so what is r dash value beta what is r dash value here r dash value is given as 36 ohm what is the meaning of wire being drawn out guys the meaning of wire being drawn out means volume will remain constant what is constant here volume is constant okay so a wire of resistance x ohm so what is r value given here r value is given as x ohm right its length is increased to three times so they are asking new resistance is becoming 36 ohm what will be the value of x so what is the meaning of drawn out drawn out means volume constant and we know if volume is constant resistance will be directly proportional to l square or not guys studied this or not so what we can write here we can directly write r divided by r dash will be equal to l square divided by l dash square or i can write it as l square divided by 3l whole square which will be l square divided by 9 l square turns out to be 1 by 9 so what will r value be it will be r dash divided by 9 which is 36 over 9 you will get it as 4 ohm guys clear all of you drawn out meaning is volume constant or wire is stretched also we can consider understood everyone length is increasing means here you can say wire is stretched if wire is stretched radius will, uh, resistance will be directly proportional to length square or inversely proportional to area square these two things again we have seen in yesterday's session clear all of you yes sir let us move on to the next question 
in a circuit shown in the figure the heat produced in 5 ohm resistor due to the current flowing in it is 20 joules right the heat produced in 6 ohm resistor is how much they are asking so basically if i say heat produced it is given as i square rt let us say for t time it is flowing guys so firstly what i'll do is here i will take it something in this manner so can i say 6 ohm and 4 ohm are they in series are 6 ohm and 4 ohm in series beta yes these are in series so as these are in series what we can say the effective resistance will be 10 ohm and here you are going to get it as 5 ohm now you please tell me 10 ohm resistance and 5 ohm resistance how are they are they in parallel or not so now you see these are in parallel now in parallel will current get divided or not guys yes in parallel how will current get divided will they get divided in the inverse ratio of the resistances beta so here you can take i value you can consider i1 value you can consider i2 value now what they have given heat produced in 5 ohm resistor is given let us say because imagine that it is a, a constant current guys so what is heat produced in 5 ohm resistor per unit time i am taking per unit time per one second i am taking how much current is flowing through it i1 or not beta so i can write it as i1 square into what is the resistance 5 so heat produced in 5 ohm is given as 20 so i can write i1 square into 5 so i1 square value will be equal to 4 what will i1 value be beta 2 ampere now please tell me i1 and i2 are in parallel or not because they are in parallel how will the uh, current will get divided guys it will get divided in the inverse ratio of the resistances clear so i want to find i2 value it will be i1 into r1 divided by r2 So I1 value is uh, we got 2 ampere, R1 is 5 ohm divided by 10. So what is I2 value, beta? 1 ampere. So how much current is flowing through 10 ohm? 1 ampere. It means the current flowing through 6 ohm and 4 ohm is also how much? 1 ampere only. They are asking us what is the heat produced through 6 ohm, guys? So what we can write? How much current is flowing? I2 square you can consider into 6 per unit time. I am finding, guys. So I'll write it as one square into six. Six joules will be the answer. This is the current produced or heat produced in six ohm resistor, guys. Clear, all of you? Understood. I have taken again. Time is not mentioned here, so I have taken unit time, guys. Is that clear? So in one second, they have mentioned that heat produced through five ohm resistance is twenty joule. So I have first found out six um, ohm and four ohm are in series, so effective resistance of them will be ten ohm, and same current will flow through six ohm and four ohm resistor, which will flow through ten ohm resistor. So I got five and ten to be in parallel now, guys. So let us say total current I is flowing into the junction. Now this current is going to get divided. So from the heat produced in five ohm resistor, I was able to calculate I one. and by current distribution in parallel combination i was able to calculate i2 again by using heat produced formula i square into r into t for one second i am trying to find i will be able to calculate the heat produced across 6 ohm resistance clear all of you yes or no yes 10 cells each of emf e and same internal resistance are connected in series so what should be the effective emf beta 10 cells are connected together let us say symmetrically So you will get 10 E or not, and what will be effective internal resistance? You will get it as 10 R. Now what they are saying, if due to oversight, huh? Some person is like me only, huh? Oversight. One cell is connected wrongly. I have told you guys, out of n cells, n cells are given to us. M cells polarity is reversed. How many cells polarity is reversed? m cells polarity is reversed out of n cells if m cells polarity is reversed what is the effective emf beta that i am going to get will i get n minus 2m into e or not mixed grouping again no, right no, sorry you can consider series grouping so how many number of cells we have initially 10 out of this how many polarities got reversed 1 into e so what is the effective emf beta it will be 8e but as i said what will remain same 
the effective internal resistance will remain same guys so equivalent emf of the combination will be 8e out of n cells if polarity of m cells is reversed then i am going to get the effective emf as n minus 2m into e i hope that is clear to all yes or no right let us move to the next question internal resistance of a 4.2 volt cell which gives a current of 0.4 ampere through a resistance of 10 ohm is how much we are simply going to draw the network for this guys so what is the cell given as cell has an emf or terminal voltage of 4.2 there is some internal resistance i don't know how much is the internal resistance but it is mentioned that when connected to a resistance of 10 ohm right it is giving a current of 0.4 ampere guys so how much current is flowing in the circuit current of 0.4 ampere is flowing in the circuit here you have been given 4.2 volt i don't know the internal resistance i know the external resistance which is 10 ohm so if you look at the let us say we are starting from here guys right to to the flow of current what is the resistance offered by the entire entire circuit it is capital r plus small r or not so what is r effective here you will get it as capital r plus small r which i can write it as 10 plus small r what is the value of e or v here it is 4.2 volt guys so how can i find out the value of i i we know it is written as e divided by r effective which i can write it as 4.2 divided by 10 plus r and what is i value given as 0.4 i think it is given as so 0.4 value will be 4.2 divided by 10 plus r implies i can write 4 plus 0.4 r will be equal to 4.2 0.4 r value will be equal to 0.2 r value will be equal to 0.2 divided by 0.4 beta it is 1 by 2 so the internal resistance turns out to be 0.5 ohm clear everyone the internal resistance turns out to be 0.5 ohm understood all of you any doubt in it are we connected guys is yes. that clear right let us see the next yes. question the identical bulbs have been given guys and are connected as shown in the figure when switch s is open the power consumed in the bulb a is p what is the power consumed by the same bulb when the switch, switch s is closed right so yesterday it was there but i said it will anyhow come i will explain later now whenever you take a bulb guys bulb is an appliance so any appliance will have a certain specific rating there will be a rating for voltage there will be a rating for power okay so what they are saying is when switch s is open the power consumed by the bulb a is p all are identical bulbs guys so because they are identical bulbs they are going to have same resistances again and let us say potential difference is v suppose when switch is open suppose if switch is open s is open let us try to draw the circuit in this case when switch is open i am going to get something like this yes or no right now i am going to get the circuit something like this because here the circuit is open can current flow in this manner see very simple logic as soon as the switch is closed or even if switch is not closed there will be some current coming out right there is some current coming out this current will now reach the junction as you can see when switch is open right current cannot flow through this path so when switch is open entire current will flow through this path only okay but when switch is closed then what is going to happen the current will get divided again so initially when switch is open you have resistance r here you have resistance r here let us say it is v guys right and because it is a closed circuit we can apply kvl or not so to the flow of current what is the resistance offered to the flow of 
current guys by the circuit r and r both will be in series so what will r effective value be it will be equal to r plus r which is 2r so how much is the current flowing let us imagine that i current is flowing guys in first case or i1 current is flowing okay so same current will flow through both the bulbs a bulb as well as b bulb guys so how much will be the current now current value will be given as v divided by r effective which will get it as v divided by 2r right so what will be power developed across a how much current is flowing through bulb a i current is flowing so i square into resistance of a you can write which i'll get it as v by 2r whole square into resistance of a is r only again so v square divided by 4r will be the power in first case is that clear in second case you see when switch is closed if i draw the circuit guys when switch is closed if i draw the circuit all are identical bulbs only beta now here you have one resistance so once the switch is closed you are also going to have one more resistor in this manner so you are now going to have three resistors guys r r and r right so in this case if i take v is the again same battery only so let us say now current is i dash beta so what will these two be in these two resistors are connected between two same points so are they going to be in parallel or not yes so in parallel you are going to get it as r by 2 ohm so i can further draw this circuit something in this manner you will get v here you are getting r in the same manner here you will get r by 2 because they were in parallel now so here we got r r by 2 and we have v how much current is flowing now i dash current is flowing guys so that i dash current will reach here also now because the resistance is same guys see this i dash will now move through this path as well as through this path and in both the paths resistances are same because the resistances are same i will say the current will get equally divided beta because the resistances are same the current is going to get equally divided so what is the resistance offered to the flow of current in this circuit guys in this circuit what is the resistance offered to the flow of current both are in series combination only so i am going to get r effective value as r plus r divided by 2 so r effective value will get it as 3r over 2 guys so what is the now current flowing now current flowing if i consider i dash value again i'll get it as v by r effective let us take r effective dash guys so what will i get it as v divided by 3r by 2 so current will be 2v divided by 3r okay now what is the new power pa dash if i say how much current is flowing through first bulb i dash square you can write i dash square into resistance of a which i can write it as 2v divided by 3r whole square what is resistance of a r only so i'll get it as 4 by 9 v square by r clear all of you can i multiply and divide by 4 yes we can multiply and divide by 4 so what will i get pa dash as i'll get it as uh, i think 16 by 9 into v square divided by 4r and what is already v square divided by 4r beta it is power in first case so how much will be the power becoming in second case the power in the second case will become 16 by 9 times of the power in the first case guys clear all of you understood everyone yes or no power is important concept again did you understand all of you hello people Am I audible? Yes. Sir. Did you understand, guys? Initially, this switch is open. So when switch is open, this part of the circuit is open. It means no current will be flowing through the C bulb. So bulb C will not glow. Then when the switch is closed, this part of the circuit is closed. So current will flow through C bulb. So C bulb will also glow in this case. So they are asking what is the power consumed 
by A when switch is closed. If power consumed by A when switch is open is P. So this is the procedure to solve the question, guys. I hope you understood all of you. Yes or no, yar. Next question, let us see. Three resistances P, Q, R, each of three ohm and an unknown resistance S form the four arms of a Wheatstone bridge. When a resistance of six ohm is connected in parallel to S, the bridge gets balanced. What is the value of S they are asking? Okay. So P, Q, R are given and they are saying are the four form the four arms of a Wheatstone bridge, guys. Something like this. You can take it something in this manner. In any way, you can take it again. P, Q, R, and S. You can take it anyway. So this is P you can take. This is uh, Q you can take. This is R you can take. This is S you can take. You can take anything. So three resistances, each of three ohm. Unknown resistance S form the four arms of a Wheatstone bridge. When a resistance of six ohm is connected in parallel to S, the bridge will get balanced, it seems. Okay, so what is now connected with uh, across this S, you have one more resistance 6 ohm connected in parallel. Now they are saying when 6 ohm is connected in parallel, the bridge is getting balanced, guys. So, what we can write in this situation can I write P by Q will be equal to R divided by how much is this? The effective of this should be. 3 ohm or not because already it is given as P is given as 3 ohm R is given as 3 ohm Q is also given as 3 ohm yes or no beta now on the other side for the bridge to be balanced on the other side also you should have 3 ohm only now when will I get 3 ohm already you have 1 ohm uh, 6 ohm resistance in parallel I want effective resistance to be 3 ohm when will I get if this is also 6 ohm guys so directly I can say it should also be equal to 6 ohm however you can find it in this manner you can write it as because both are in parallel you can write it as 6 s divided by 6 plus s beta all these are one only or not p q and r they all are going to get cancelled out guys so what we can write from this I can write 6 s value will be equal to 6 plus I do any mistake in this r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 only no Yes or no, yaar. P by Q is 1. Achha, you cannot cancel R here, sorry. You can write R in this manner only. So what will I get with now? I will get 6S will be equal to 3 into 6 plus S. So implies what will this be? 6S will be 18 plus 3S, which we can write 3S value as 18 implies s value will be 6 ohm directly we can tell that without doing the question also guys this is 3 this is 3 this is 3 automatically this also should be 3 when will this be 3 if s value is 6 ohm 2 6 ohms are connected in parallel automatically you will get 3 ohm as the resistance guys clear all of you yes or no everyone in a meter bridge the balancing length from the left end Standard resistance of 2 ohm is in the right gap is found to be 40 centimeters. The value of unknown resistance they are asking. Again, it is depending on uh, balance, uh, balanced Wheatson bridge case only, guys. Balancing length from left end is given as 40 centimeters. So, automatically on the other side, what will be the length, guys? So, left end you have 40 centimeters. So, you can take it something like this. The circuit will be in this manner, guys. This will be our meter bridge now. It will contain a wire of. You can take something in this manner. This is our meter bridge wire, one meter wire, guys. So on one side, here you have an unknown resistance beta. On left side, you have unknown resistance. Standard resistance of 2 ohm is used in the right gap. So in right side, we have a known resistance of how much beta? R. So here we have unknown resistance X, here we have known resistance R. And they are saying that the 
null point is obtained at how much length at 40 centimeters so if this length 40 centimeters from left hand they have given guys so if this is 40 centimeters automatically what will the other length be better as you all know it will be 60 centimeters so what we can write from this i can write x divided by 40 will be equal to r divided by 60. what will x value be to find out x value you will get it as 2 by 3 times of r already r is given as 2 ohm you will get it as 4 by 3 ohm meter clear all of you understood everyone Kirchhoff's first law, which is Kirchhoff junction law, it is going to deal with what beta? It deals with conservation of charge. Yesterday I have told you this point again. Kirchhoff's voltage law or loop law will deal with conservation of energy, guys. So now everyone. Right. Let us consider potentiometer case now. What they have given is a potentiometer consists of wire of length 8 meters and resistance of 20 ohm it is connected to a cell of emf 4 volt the potential difference per unit length of the wire will be how much they are asking so what are they asking beta they are asking potential difference per unit length right so are they asking potential difference means i can write i into r divided by l yes or no so is current given current is not given but what they have given is potentiometer wire consists of a Potentiometer consists of a wire of length 8 meters and a resistance 20 ohm. It is connected to a cell of EMF 4 volt only is given, guys. So primary circuit, I can draw the circuit something like this. It has a cell of EMF 4 volt. There is no internal resistance to that because nothing has been mentioned. There is neither rheostat, guys. So you have a certain wire AB. You have a certain wire AB something like this. Yeah, so this is your E value and this will how much is the resistance of this wire you have 20 ohm and length of the wire it's already given as 8 meter guys so how much current will be flowing now please tell me this is A and B let us consider A and B is the potentiometer wire so to the flow of current because this is a closed circuit guys to the flow of current what is the resistance offered by the primary circuit of the potentiometer 20 ohm. What is the EMF? 4 volt. So what are we going to get I value as? So or then directly you can say here you have whatever is potential difference between these two points. Same will be the potential difference between A and B or not. Whatever is potential difference between A and B, same will be potential difference between these two points. Which is already 4 volt. Guys. So I can write 4 divided by length is given as 8. So you will get it as 0.5 volt per meter. Clear everyone? Yes or no? Is that clear? In primary circuit, usually you will have cell, you will have internal resistance, right? You are also going to have a rheostat and you will have potentiometer wire which will have high resistivity and low value of alpha, guys. So here in this case, they have given only cell with some EMF. Internal resistance is not mentioned. Neither is rheostat mentioned, guys. So what we can say, potential difference across AB will be same as potential difference between these two points, which is 4 volt, guys. So directly I can write 4 by 8, which is 0.5 meter, guys. 0.5 volt per meter. Clear all of you? I hope it is clear. Now, another case, as you can see, two cells of EMF, E1 and E2 are joined in series and the balancing length of potentiometer wire 550 centimeters two cells are joined not one cell guys if the terminal of e1 is reversed the balancing length is found to be 150 centimeters so what is the principle on which potential potentiometer works guys potential difference should be proportional to what potential difference should be proportional to the balancing length yes or no yes or no guys potential difference should be proportional to what balancing length now when two cells are connected in series if they are supporting each other what we can write e1 plus e2 because e2 is greater here i will write it as e2 plus e1 will be equal to how much beta or will be proportional to 550 
in the same manner when terminal e1 is reversed what will i write e2 difference e1 will be proportional to what beta 150 so now what i am going to do is i am simply going to divide both of them guys so if i divide both of them what are we going to get e2 plus e1 divided by e2 minus e1 will be 550 over 150 guys which i can write it as 11 divided by 3 or we can write 3 times of e2 plus e1 will be equal to 11 times of e2 minus e1 just i have told you this also guys right so i can directly write 3 e2 plus 3 e1 will be equal to 11 e2 minus 11 e1 so i'll get 14 e1 value to be equal to 8 e2 they're asking e1 by e2 value guys which you will get it as 8 by 14 turns out to be 4 is to 7 clear clear everyone are you yes or no the potential difference will be proportional yes. to what balancing length if two cells are connected such that they are supporting each other effective emf e1 plus e2 if two cells are connected such that they are uh, opposing each other you will get e1 difference e2 because e2 is greater than e1 i wrote it as e2 minus e1 guys or directly you can use the formula e1 by e2 will be or here in this case e2 is greater no so i'll get e2 by e1 will be l1 by l2 plus 1 divided by l1 by l2 minus 1 okay which formula i have already given you yesterday here all of you right what they have mentioned here is end a and b are connected to the positive and negative terminal of a cell of emf 20 volt the value of voltage shown by the voltmeter of negligible resistance as shown in the figure so the, it is showing almost uh, end a and b are connected to the positive and negative terminal of a cell of 20 volt it seems guys end a and b are connected if i draw the circuit here what are we going to get we have four resistors or not we have four resistors like this four resistors of four ohm and at the ends we have a and b but they are asking us to find potential difference between which point and which point they are asking us to find potential difference between these two points forget about the dotted line guys and they have mentioned that a and b are connected to an external battery whose emf is given as 20 volt beta whose emf is given as how much 20 volt so here you have 4 ohm 4 ohm 4 ohm and 4 ohm now please tell me it is a closed circuit guys so to the flow of current so automatically current will come out of the positive terminal whatever current is coming out of the positive terminal same current should enter back into negative terminal so to the flow of current all these four resistors end to end and same current is flowing guys so will they be in parallel or not what will i get r effective as 4 ohm all you will add guys 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 so i will write it as 4 times of 4 ohm meter which will be 16 ohm so what will current value be i can write it as 20 divided by 16 so current flowing will be 5 by 4 ampere is that clear but now i want to find potential difference between p and q only how much current is flowing i current is flowing now between p and q what is the effective resistance guys so if i take p and q beta let us take here we have p here we have q what is the effective resistance between p and q three resistors are connected in series or not yes so what will be the effective resistance between these two points you will get the effective resistance as 12 ohm and how much current is flowing through that as you can see i have a current of 5 by 4 ampere flowing through it guys or we can say directly this 20 volt will get divided equally because all are identical resistance no 20 volt will get divided equally 5 5 5 5 so overall answer will be 15 volt guys directly i can say that however what we can write potential difference across pq potential difference across pq i can write it as 5 by 4 into 12 which i will get it as 5 times of 3 which is 15 volt if you solve the question it is like this but without solving only i can tell because identical resistors are there potential difference will get divided equally so across a and b a potential difference of 20 volt is there so across each resistor a potential difference of 5 volt will be there so across three resistors potential difference of 15 volt will be there guys clear everyone understood or not all of you 
I hope it is clear, guys. Next question, let us see. So in the network shown below, potential difference across PQ is given. What is the potential difference across PQ? So if I redraw the circuit, as you can see, here you have what, beta? 40 and 40 are in which case here? Here you have parallel combination. So because identical resistors are there, you will get R by 2, beta. You will get it as 20 ohm. Now, if I again redraw the circuit, guys, see direct case you have, direct case only again. So here you have 20 ohm. Again, here also we have 20 ohm. Yes or no? They're asking us to find potential difference between PQ, guys. Okay. So here you have 20 ohm. Here also I got 20 ohm. This is your 10 volt. Because they're identical resistors, will the potential difference get divided equally or not, guys? Yes, so here you will have 5 volt. Here also you'll have 5 volt only. Clear? So across 20 ohm, you have 5 volt. So you can say across 6, 40 ohm resistor also you'll have 5 ohm only. Across another 40 ohm also you'll have 5 ohm only, guys. 5 volt only. Clear all of you? Understood? Direct question, guys. Identical resistors are there, so potential difference will get divided equally in this case. Understood all of you? I hope it is clear. Right. Let us see the next question, guys. A galvanometer has a resistance of 20 ohm. It, it seems that it is shunted by a wire of 2 ohm. If total current is 2 ampere, the part of it passing through the shunt they are asking. They have again direct question. We have a galvanometer whose resistance is how much better? 20 ohm. It is now shunted again in order to convert into a ammeter, how much is the shunt resistance given? 2 ohm. So this is G value. How much is this? 20 ohm. Here you have shunt resistance. How much is it? 2 ohm. And they're saying that a total current of 2 ampere is flowing. Shunting is always done in parallel or not, guys. So what we can say, current will get divided. Here you have I1. Here you have I2. Okay, so in parallel combination, how will current get divided? They're asking per, uh, the part of it passing through the shunt is how much, guys? So I2 is passing or not? So we know I2 value can be written as total current into current will get divided in the inverse ratio of the resistances, guys. So I2 can be written as I into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay, so this is your R2 value. This is your R1 value. What we can write here? we can write it as i into total current is 2 r1 value will be 20 divided by i can write it as 20 plus 2 beta which you will get it as 40 divided by 22 which turns out to be 20 divided by 11 ampere so 20 divided by 11 will be flowing through the shunt and if they ask you what is the reading of the galvanometer now i'll write i into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 Total current is 2. This is also 2 divided by what I'll write 20 plus 2, which turns out to be 4 divided by 22, guys. I can write it as 2 divided by 11 ampere. Clear all of you? Yes or no? Is that clear? Yes. Next question is based on average current guys as i said average current will be what it is the ratio of total charge flown delta q divided by delta t beta total charge flown divided by what total time taken yes or no and they are saying that charge is varying as 3t square plus 2 they are asking us to find average current through the conductor between 1 second and 3 seconds so from this First and foremost, initially I can find the charge. What is that initially charge again? At t is equal to 1 second. So what is the initial charge beta? 3 into 1 square plus 2, which I will get it as? How much will I get? Will I get it as 5 coulomb? And at t is equal to 3 seconds, guys. Will I get charge as? 3 into 3 square plus 2. So will it be 29 coulomb or not? So what is total charge flown? Delta Q divided by delta T, which I can write it as 
q final minus q initial divided by t final minus t initial how much is q final 29 minus 5 divided by 3 minus 1 which is 24 divided by 2 i will get the average current as 12 ampere beta clear yes or no i hope it is clear okay next case now when 20 volt per meter electric field is produced inside a conductor so electric field is given as 20 volt per meter and current density is given as 4 into 10 power 4 ampere per meter square they are asking resistivity guys so are we going to use microscope microscopic form of ohm's law or not we can write j value as sigma into e which i can also write it as 1 by rho into e they are asking rho value we will get it as e divided by j e is 20 j is 4 into 10 power 4 you will get the answer as 5 into 10 power minus 4 ohm meter. Direct question again, microscopic form of Ohm's law, guys. So 5 into 10 power minus 4 ohm meter will be the answer for that. Mobility of free electron, right? What is mobility of free electron? Very, very important, guys. What does it depend on is very important. So we basically know the mobility is given as ratio of drift speed to electric field or not. But as I said, will you depend on electric field? No. Right? What does it depend on? We also know what is drift speed given as beta? Drift speed, if I write, if you want to write it in vector form, what we can take? Vd bar can be written as minus E tau divided by Me. Electric field can I write or not? If I forget about the vector notation, guys, so simply we can write implies Vd will be equal to E tau divided by Me into capital E right implies what is vd divided by e now it will be e tau divided by m e so as you can see mobility is depending on what beta it is depending on relaxation time does it depend on electric field no so you can write directly mobility of free electrons in a conductor is not going to depend on electric field is not going to depend on potential difference, is not going to depend on resistivity. It will depend only on the relaxation time. Clear all of you? Drift velocity of the electrons in a current carrying conductor is of the order. Drift speed is of the order. How much they are asking, guys? Mm, it should be meter per second again, something like that. You can please write second inverse here. Right, so drift velocity of electrons in a current carrying conductor is usually of how much order, guys? If I take a di dielectric breakdown to be 10 power 6, hmm, I think it will be near about 10 power minus 4 meter per second. Let me cross check this question, guys. Figure shows I and V for two conductors, right? The respective resistances they are asking, guys. So what we can obtain? From Ohm's law, direct case. We know R value is given as V by I. Okay. So what is the V by I? It is slope of V versus I graph. But here, which graph is given to us? I versus V graph is given, guys. So what are we going to get here? So if I just uh, if I if I take I by V graph, so here what do I get? One by R value will be I by V. So this will be what beta slope of I versus V graph. So which graph is given to us? I versus V graph is given. So what we can write now? One of them. So I can directly write one by R A. A is making how much angle? 30 degrees, guys. So I can write it as tan 30, which is 1 by root 3. In the same manner, 1 by RB, I can write it as, it is 60 beta. So you can write it as how much here? Root 3. Right. So what will you get here? I can just do 1 by RB whole divided by 1 by RA. So 1 by RB is root 3. And this will be 1 by root 3, which you will get it as 3, guys. This can also be written as Ra divided by Rb. 
सो आर ए बाई आर बी वैल्यू विल बी हाउ मच बेटा थ्री इज टू वन सी इट इज अ वेरी सिंपल लॉजिक बट डायरेक्टली पीपल विल राइट टेन थर्टी बाई टेन सिक्सटी यू विल गेट आंसर वन इज टू थ्री एंड दैट ऑप्शन मे बी अवेलेबल गाइज सो प्लीज रिमेंबर इट इज आई वी ग्राफ इट इज नॉट वी बाई आई ग्राफ गाइज इफ वी बाई आई ग्राफ इज गिवन डायरेक्टली वुड है रेसिस्टेंस ऑफ ए टू बी टेन थर्टी रेसिस्टेंस ऑफ बी टू बी टेन सिक्सटी ओके बट आई वर्सेज वी ग्राफ इज गिवन सो यू नीड टू बी वेरी केयरफुल गाइज Kilo watt hour is unit of watt, guys. Kilo watt hour is unit of watt. Kilo watt is power. So power into time is nothing but energy or not, guys? It will be the unit of energy again. Next, the current through five ohm resistance connected across AB, as shown in the given circuit, they are saying. Very important question, guys. We will use for such type of questions. We are going to make use of superposition principle. It's a very important question. If I just redraw the circuit, so what I'll do is I will assume from positive terminal of eight volt, I am going to get some I one current beta. So this I one current is going to come here, and as I said you, whatever current is coming out of positive terminal, the same current should again enter back into the negative terminal. Okay, here again we have four volt. Let us say from here we are getting. I two ampere guys. Again, same has to enter back into I two. So overall, I one is reaching into junction A. I two is also reaching the junction A. So how much current will be flowing through five ohm guys? Will it be I one plus I two junction law? Yes. So what we are going to do now? I am going to apply KVL separately in the first uh, uh, loop as well as in the second loop, beta. So if I let us say we are starting at point B, in first loop we are starting at point B. So what will I get? Are we moving in the direction of current? Yes. So we are moving from negative to positive. So what will I get, Bitna? Plus eight volt. We are moving in the direction of current across the resistor. What I will get? Minus I one into two. Again we are moving in the direction of current only. What will I get? Minus of I one plus I two into five. We came back to the same point. Let us take it. It will be zero, guys. So what are we going to get from here? Eight minus two i one minus five i one minus five i two will be equal to what? Zero. So I can write seven i one plus five i two will be equal to eight. This is one of the equation. Then again, I am going to apply KVL in another loop, guys. Let us say we are starting uh, at this point and we are moving in clockwise sense. Here we started at B and moved in clockwise sense. We are starting from this point, moving in clockwise sense in the second loop, guys. We are moving from negative to positive terminal. What will I get? Plus four volt. You are moving again in the direction of current. What are we going to write, Bitna? Minus I one plus I two into five. Again, we are moving in the direction of current only. So what I'll write? Minus I two into two. We are coming back to the same point. So between same points, you are not going to have any potential difference. So what I'll write? Four minus five I one minus five I two. Minus two i two will be equal to zero. I can write this as five i one plus seven i two should be equal to four. The two equations we got from this. I you need to find both i one and i two. Then the current flowing through five ohm resistance will be i one plus i two, guys. So for that purpose, what I'll do is I'll subtract these two equations. Okay, I'm getting i one minus i two. I think so. I'll add. Let us say we are adding both the equations, guys. So if we add both these equations, what will I get? Seven i one plus five i one, twelve i one. Five two plus seven i two again, twelve i two. Eight plus four will be again twelve. If I take twelve common, I will get i one plus i two, which will again be twelve. Guys, implies what is i one plus i two? No, it will be equal to one ampere. So how much current is flowing through five ohm resistance, guys? I one plus i two both is flowing. So what will I get here? One ampere will be the answer for that. It's a very important case. it is also called as principle of superposition first i will take this loop then i will take this loop and i am going to superpose them guys so then you will get the answer as i1 plus i2 will be the current flowing through 5 ohm if they ask you i1 what is current flowing through 2, 2 ohm right on uh, 8 volt or you can do this question with cells in parallel also i can consider this to be one cell 8 volt 2 ohm This to be another cell, four volt, two ohm. Positive terminals are connected together. I can use E one by R one plus E two by R two 
whole divided by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2. Clear all of you? Yes or no, everyone? Yes, Let us try to do some more questions, guys. What is given here is a simple potentiometer circuit is shown in the figure. Internal resistance of the 10 volt battery is negligible. AB is the uniform wire of resistance 4 ohm and length 100 centimeters. If the deflection in the galvanometer is zero, what is the length in AB they are asking? What is length AB they are asking? This length, how, how will they ask that length? I, I think they are asking this length, guys. This length they are asking, okay. The simple potentiometer circuit is shown in the figure. The internal resistance of the 10 ohm battery, 10 volt battery is negligible. AB is a uniform wire of resistance 4 ohm and length 100 centimeters. If the reflection of the galvanometer is zero, then the length AB is how much they are asking. Now what I'll do, I'll take primary circuit separately. This is our primary circuit. Here you have 1 ohm. And AB wire if I take, AB wire also has some resistance guys. So you can take AB wire to have a resistance of how much? AB wire has a resistance of 5 ohm beta. Okay, so this is already given to us as 10 volt. This is given as 1 ohm. And this has a resistance of how much? 5 ohm. Right, this is a primary circuit which is independent again. So current will be coming out of positive terminal. The same current will enter back. If I apply KVL, right, starting from this point beta. So to the flow of current in the primary circuit, what is the resistance offered by the circuit? I think 4 ohm is given. No? 4 ohm is given, guys. So what is the resistance offered by the circuit, uh, primary circuit to the flow of current? 4 ohm and 1 ohm. Yes or no? 5 ohm. What will I get? Effective resistance in primary circuit will get it as 5 ohm. Current in the primary circuit will be 10 divided by 5, which is 2 ampere. So 2 ampere current is flowing, guys. Now you see. What is the uh, internal resistance negligible? The 1 ohm is dynamic resistance. It is not internal resistance. It is dynamic resistance you can take, or which is the rheostat again. OK, so 1 by 10 by 5, which you will get it as 2 ampere. Is. Now what they are saying, deflection of galvanometer is 0, length AB. Now you please try to understand secondary circuit if I take. In secondary circuit, Right, we have connected some 2 volt battery and it is showing a. You can take it something in this manner. This is our 4 ohm and it is giving null deflection somewhere at this point, whose length is given as how much? I don't think they have given the length, but they are asking us to find what will that length be, guys. So imagine this is point A and this is point B. So total uh, AB is uniform wire of resistance 4 ohm and length 100 centimeters, it seems. If deflection of the galvanometer is zero, then length AB. I don't think it is making sense, guys. Already length AB is 100 centimeters, no? So it doesn't make sense over there. But uh, let us just try to find that question out again, right? Let us see if the, what I am thinking is correct or not. Now, what is the potential difference here? See, between this point and this point, is there any element? No element. Between this point and this point, is there any element? No element. So whatever is potential difference between these two points, will same be potential difference across these two points also? Yes. So what I can say? Potential difference across AB will be 2 volts. OK? Clear all of you? Now please try to understand. Now I need to find AB length, guys. I should find resistance first. I'll find out resistance here. So I current is flowing through it, guys. But resistance will not be 4 ohm now. So I'll write I into R dash will be equal to 2. How much current is flowing? 2. 2 into R dash will be equal to 2. So R dash will be what beta? 1 ohm. Right? And resistance will be proportional to the length, guys, as you know again. So what do we have? The whole R resistance, 4 ohm resistance, is distributed equally in 100 centimeters. I want only 1 ohm resistance. It will be distributed in some x centimeters. If I apply crisscross beta, what are we going to get? If we apply crisscross here, I am directly going to get 4x value will be equal to 100. x value will be 100 over 4, which will be 25 centimeters. 
Clear everyone? 25 centimeters should be the answer for that. Understood? They are not asking the length, guys. They are asking the balancing length here. Okay. Did you get the question, all of you? Yes, sir. Right. This is how we solve question again. Primary circuit you take separately. Then you bring secondary circuit into picture. So if we apply KVL in primary circuit, how much current is flowing through the resist through the uh, potentiometer wire? 2 ohm. And now when you bring secondary circuit into picture, the potential difference across AB will be same as the potential difference across these two points, which is 2 volts again. Clear, everyone? Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Right. So let us move to the next part, guys. Now, equivalent resistance between A and B shown in the given circuit they are asking. What is the easiest way is, A is here, no, guys? Assume this 6 and 6 to be one paper of the book. And 4 and 4 to be one more paper overlapping on the below paper, guys. So what I will do is, I will just turn the first paper. So assume that this is, this is your first paper. This is your second paper. So one paper is lying on the second paper. So I just want to turn it, guys. So I am just going to make this circuit like this. So I'll I'll bring this point outside, beta. So this you will get it as. So I can take this as A here. So what will I get here? This will be four ohm. In the same manner, this will be four ohm. Right between these two, four ohm and four ohm, you are going to have six ohm. Here you are already given as six ohm, and between these two also you are going to have 6 ohm right between now here you can take point b very simple logic now you see 4 ohm 4 ohm 6 ohm 6 ohm and in between you are again going to have 6 ohm now please tell me is it a balanced wheatstone bridge beta yes or no it is a case of balanced wheatstone bridge so because it is a case of balanced wheatstone bridge what we can do we can simply remove see 4 by 4, 1. 6 by 6, 1. So what we can do with a middle resistor, you can remove. So what will you get now? 4 and 6 will be in series. 4 and 6 in series means, what is the effective resistance? You will get it as 10 ohm. In the same manner, here also, 4 and 6 will be in series. Again, you are going to get it as 10 ohm. So overall, this will be 10 ohm. This will be 10 ohm. And these two are connected between two same points, beta. So two identical resistance are connected between two same points. So what will be R effective? It will be 10 over 2, which will be 5 ohm, guys. Clear, everyone? It's a case of balanced Wheatstone bridge. Understood? Yes or no? Yes. I think uh, some questions directly are there again, which I believe you will be able to solve guys okay so let me let me just uh, check some more questions two wires a and b are given of same material they have radii in the ratio 1 is to 3 they carry current 1 is to 1 right same current is flowing they are asking what is the ratio of drift speed of electrons in a and b guys so for same current for same current what is Drift speed inversely proportional to, will it be proportional to area or not? Which will be R square now. So what we can write? V1 divided by V2 will be R2 square divided by R1 square. Which I can write R2 divided by R1 whole square. R1 by R2 is given as 1 is to 3. So R2 by R1 will be 3 is to 1 whole square, which is 9 is to 1, which I have already discussed, guys. For same current, potential difference inversely proportional to area. For same potential difference, in uh, the drift speed will be inversely proportional to length same current drift speed inversely proportional to area same potential difference drift speed inversely proportional to length guys so 9 is to 1 will be the answer for this the same manner potential difference is given uh, conductor length is given guys 
this is again they are asking to find electron mobility we know mobility is given as the ratio of drift speed to electric field now how can i write the electric field as guys electric field whenever we are writing it we can write it as potential difference divided by length guys so this will become vd into l divided by potential difference so this is given as 2 into 10 power minus 4 length is given as 5 cm so 5 into 10 power minus 2 meters you can write and what is the potential difference beta 10 so what we can cancel out 2 5 is a 10 10 and 10 will get cancelled out the answer should be 10 power minus 6 beta clear everyone yes or no uh, similarly if you take uh, one two questions we will do and we'll end the session guys whatever tomorrow i'll take some extra time and whatever left out questions were there i will try to discuss along with giving review of moving charges and magnetic effects of current okay review of moving charges and magnetic effect of currents can be done quickly right so what i'll do is we will be doing the left out questions and probably the paper analysis part also don't worry guys i'll just keep on taking somewhere extra time right maybe two and a half hours three hours something like that within these two weeks i'll manage some uh, maybe maybe four days or five occasions i'll take that but uh, probably after 21st or 22nd then we can slowly increase the time and we can whatever we have uh, thought of completing we'll surely complete it guys now you see 4 ohm 4 ohm and 2 ohm are they connected in parallel or not because they are connected between two same points they'll be in parallel so how can i redraw the circuit 8 ohm is there what i'll do 4 ohm and 4 ohm effective resistance i'll take 4 and 4 in parallel will become what beta will become 2 ohm or not and again here also you'll have 2 ohm right which will be connected to an ammeter right so what is the total current this is your 2 ohm this is also your 2 ohm how much current is flowing it is mentioned that 8 ampere current is flowing now as you can see right both are connected in parallel now will current get divided equally because you have equal resistances guys yes so across this you will have 4 ampere across this also you will have 4 ampere so what is the current flowing through the ammeter guys 4 ampere will be the current flowing through the ammeter understood all of you clear everyone yes. right so likewise you can just solve or we will i think rest of the questions also you can do guys they are a kind of easy questions only right so this this case we will tell you time constant how to calculate i'll tell you guys now time constant of rc circuit they are asking there are three step procedure for finding out time constant this is the circuit given in first step what we do is we'll short circuit the battery guys what i'll do first step i am going to short circuit the battery this is our first step again step one in a, whenever they are asking you to find out time constant what I will do beta first I am going to short circuit the battery this is our first step next in second step guys I am going to consider the capacitor as the source of battery guys right so in second step how will it become now anyhow this is short circuited now you have one resistance over here right you will have one more resistance over here now capacitor should be replaced with battery so you see battery here you have positive terminal so in the same manner you need to represent it guys so here you will represent it something like this now you are going to find the effective resistance of the circuit guys so what is the first step short circuit the battery what is the second step find the uh, sorry replace the capacitor with the battery source what is the third step calculating effective resistance now as you can see some current will be starting to flow the same current will enter back to the flow of current what is the resistance offered by the circuit r and r both will be in series so effective resistance will be how much better this is the third step it will be equal to 2r now time constant will be written as the effective resistance into capacitance what is effective resistance we got 2r capacitance value was c only so time constant value will be 2r c beta this is how you are going to calculate the uh, time constant first short circuit the battery next consider the capacitor or replace the capacitor with the battery find out the effective resistance time constant will be 
the effective resistance into capacitance given, guys. So here capacitance given is C, so I'll get directly 2RC. If the capacitance given is 2C, then I'll get the answer as 4RC, guys. Clear all of you? Is that clear? I think you will be able to solve uh, the other questions, guys. Basic questions have been only given. So I hope you will be able to do those questions. OK? Right. So whatever left out pending things are there, probably tomorrow, day after tomorrow, I'll cover those, along with moving charges and magnetic effects of current. Any doubts in today's session, all of you? Any doubts in today's session? All easy to moderate questions I've discussed. I have not discussed any difficult question, guys, because again, the intention is to cover easy, moderate things. Difficult questions, if I explain, hardly one or two may understand, but the rest will, everything will go over your head, guys. So that is the reason I have taken easy to moderate questions so that 60 to 70 percent of the paper you can do easily. Any doubts, all of you? You send the doubts, Harshit. Yes, sir. We will we will look into those questions. Okay, we will do it here only then. Twelve cells, each having same EMF, are connected in series. Are kept in a closed box. Some of the cells are wrongly connected. This battery is connected in series with an ammeter and two cells identical with each other. Twelve cells, each having same EMF, are connected in series and are kept in a closed box. So, what will be the effective EMF in first case? It is twelve E. Some of the cells are wrongly connected. Okay. This battery is connected in series with an ammeter and two cells identical with each other. The current is 3 ampere when the cells and battery aid each other and 2 ampere when the cells and battery oppose each other. How many cells are wrongly connected? So I don't know how many cells are wrongly connected. Let us say M cells are wrongly connected out of 12 cells. M cells are wrongly connected. So from this, what we can write is, so collection of collection of cells is nothing but a battery, guys. Okay. So I will take one. How much will be the EMF now? If M cells are wrongly connected, we know it will be N minus 2M. So 12 cells were already given. So I'll get 12 minus 2M into E. This is one of the cell. Now what they are saying, it is connected to this battery is connected in series with ammeter and two identical cells with each other. Okay. So maybe they have some internal resistance also, guys. So 12 cells are there. So you'll get some internal resistance. Take some internal resistance also. This is one battery now whose internal resistance will be 2LR again. Now it is connected to an ammeter. First case, you see. How are they connected? When the cells and battery aid each other. What is the meaning of aiding each other? means positive terminal is connected to negative terminal. OK, so here what we can consider, you can take it something like this. They are going to support each other. How many cells? Again, two cells identical with each other. So what will I get here? You can get something in this manner. This is the situation in first case. This will be 2R. This will be 2E. And first case, how much current is flowing? They are saying that 3 ampere, I think. 3 ampere. In second case, how much? 2 ampere. So in second case, what is the situation now? In second case, it will be something like this. You will have ammeter over here. Now they are saying oppose each other. So as they are opposing each other means positive connected to positive only. This is the situation. 
so here you have 12 minus 2m into e here you will have 12r as it is this will be 2e and 2r okay so you can if you if possible you can take not an issue so you can take this as i and how much is i in second case 2 ampere so now they are saying how many cells are wrongly connected what we can do in first case right what is the overall emf both are supporting each other so 12 12e minus 2me plus 2e yes or no so effective emf if you take you will get it as sum of these 12e plus 2e will be 14e so you'll get it as 14e minus 2me divided uh, this is your total emf now what is the effective resistance offered in the circuit the effective resistance will be it will be 14r now what will be the current in first case you you got 3 ampere so i can write i1 value as 14e minus 3me sorry minus 2me divided by 14r in second case what is e effective now if you take the second case e effective you have 12 you'll subtract it now so what will i get 10e anyhow minus 2me only will get what is the effective resistance you will get it as anyhow again 14r only so i2 value will be 10e minus 2me divided by 14r so what we'll do is we'll just divide both of them so if you divide both of them i1 is already given as 3 i2 is given as 2 so if i divide both of them what i'll get dara so what will i get here are so you can divide both of them you can cancel out uh, 14r you will get two equations you can just do that okay i i, I just got it now so what will i get here 14r value will be if i take e common you can take 2e common also here you will get 7 minus m divided by 3 you will get here again 14r value you can take 2e common you will get it as 5 minus m divided by Two you are going to get. Left hand sides are equal, so you can equate the right hand sides. Two e into seven minus m divided by three will be equal to two e into five minus m divided by two. So you can cancel out two e and two e. So you will get fourteen minus two m will be equal to fifteen minus three m. So m value will be fifteen minus fourteen, which is one. Clear. next question you see in a potentiometer experiment the cell in the secondary circuit is shunted with 5 ohm the balancing length is 6 meters and it is 7 meters when this cell is shunted with 10 ohm what is the internal resistance they are asking two different cases we have here in so whenever it is shunted with let us say it doesn't have an internal resistance so it has internal resistance so balancing length is given what is basic logic potential difference will be proportional to balancing length yes or no so whenever it is shunted means it is connected in parallel again so what is potential difference you will get it as v minus ir okay so when the cell is cell in the secondary circuit is shunted with 5 ohm the balancing length is 6 meters so what will i get here now potential difference in first case i will get it as let us say emf is e so e minus i1 into small r will be equal to or will be proportional to you can say 6 meters then in second case emf is not changing e minus i2 into small r will now be proportional to 7 meters so what we can write e minus i1 r divided by e minus i2 r will be equal to 6 divided by 7 so oh, it's shunted with 5 ohm it seems so i1 value will be how much here E divided by 
small r plus 5 and i2 value will be e divided by small r plus 10 okay so what we can write e minus of what is i1 value e divided by r plus 5 into small r divided by e minus of e divided by r plus 10 into small r will be equal to 6 divided by 7 so e anyhow will get cancelled out so what are we left out now so if i just do the lcm part so you will get it as e will anyhow get cancelled r plus 5 minus r u will be there which will be 5 so 5 into r plus 10 divided by r plus 10 minus r you will get 10 into r plus 5 will be equal to 6 by 7 you are going sir, to get hmm. sir if, if it is 100 then in parallel will get effective resistance parallel and it will secondary circuit low ila on the okay it is secondary cell shunt and the rundu points key okay external resistance apply a shindu ila so effective resistance same with the e the r the capital r so effective resistance will still be small r divided by capital R only. Small r plus capital R only. Clear? Yes. So 7r plus 70, you will get it as 12r plus 60. So you will get 5r value as 10. R value will get it as 2 ohm. Clear? Yes. Right. So I will share the test paper with you people. I think it will take a little bit of time, guys. So I'll keep it active till tomorrow uh, evening before the exam, whenever you before the class. So whenever you find time, you please solve it, guys. Till 7.30 in the night, I'll keep active, guys. Is that clear, all of you? Yes. Okay. So because I'll share it a little bit late. And uh, please ensure to submit the test, guys. Okay, because I have not found out the uh, whatever was the uh, problem with that. I was not able to resolve that. So I would request you able to please submit the test tomorrow. Okay, clear, everyone. Sir, yes, sir. So in one more question of the infinite uh, infinite resistance. I could not able. I was not able to solve that. Sir. Infinite okay, I'm, I'm sending it. Right. Rest all who don't have doubts can already left, huh? I say what's here. What are they asking? Question in Adi Nodo. In paper, Livy. So actually, it is assignment paper for MS. M assignment? Sir, so actually, for second years, they gave assignment paper when I was in first year. So I took some of the papers. Achha, so see, Jatanya. Yes, sir. Effect resistance is between A and B, sir. A and B, sir. A and B, sir. Sir, so what is the question? Sir, so what is the question? Sir, they just give network, sir. They just give find the effective resistance of the given network. Okay. So they are asking about these two points only. Between A and B, you can take. So now this is R, this is R, this is R. Yes or no? You see R, R and R. So what will repeat now? This part is repeating. So this will be again an infinite ladder only. This part will be again infinite ladder. So what I will do? I will equivalently write this as here you will have R, here you will have R, here you will have R. So I can replace this entire with R effective. Understood? So this is R. This is R effective. This is R. This is R. So what is potential difference? What is effective resistance across AB? Between AB also is infinite ladder. Between these two points also is infinite ladder. So R AB is nothing but R effective only again. So how are these two? 
are these two in parallel or not these two are in parallel which i will get r into r effective divided by r plus r effective now you will get r r r effective r plus r effective in series because there is an end to end connect with both of them so what we can say effective resistance between a and b will be equal to r plus r plus r into r effective divided by r plus r effective now what is effective resistance between a and b it is again infinite ladder only so i'll replace r effect r ab as r effective so 2r plus r into r effective divided by r plus r effective you will get what we can take this as you can take the lcm you can take the lcm and you can solve it's get stuck it's got got stuck actually are ra ra ba अरे अरे भाई तो यू जस्ट टेक दी एलसीएम यू विल गेट आर आर इफेक्टिव विल बी कैंसल्ड आउट आर इफेक्टिव स्क्वायर प्लस आर इफेक्टिव स्क्वायर विल बी इक्वल टू टू आर स्क्वायर प्लस टू आर आर इफेक्टिव दैट यू विल गेट and solve it just a minute ha right so you can take it as r divided by r plus r effect so if you just do the lcm no you will get r r effective plus r effective square will be equal to 2r square plus 2r r effective plus r r effective so any how r r effective r r effective will get cancelled out from this what we can write so you will get it as r effective square minus 2r r effective minus 2r square will be equal to 0 okay so you can just take r effective value as minus b plus or minus under root so minus b if you are doing you will get 2r plus or minus under root b square will be 4r square if you do minus 4ac you will get it as plus 8r square because a value is 1 and c value will be minus 2r square divided by 2 you will get which you will get it as 2r plus or minus if you take uh, you will get 12r square which i can write it as 2 root 3r divided by 2 now 2 and 2 root 3 2 root 3 is greater so i cannot do 2 minus 2 root 3 so that is the reason i will get it as 2r plus 2 root 3r divided by 2 which is 1 plus root 3 into r clear Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take R is equals to one. Take, ah, uh, whatever it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So I'll I'll share the test paper within some time, guys. So that's it from my end for today. Uh, I hope we have covered at least few questions which will be helpful to you people. So we will meet tomorrow, right? And please ensure that you are completing the test and submitting the test, guys. Okay. Take care, everyone. Thank you, all of you. Bye, bye.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys.